What's good, YouTube Boxing World? I am your host, Nice, and welcome back to the Fight Room. This is an in-depth update on Felix Verdejo El Diamante. Just got indicted for murder on Sunday night, and they revoked his bail. He cannot come out. He has to stay where he's at, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there is a Spanish channel called La Comay, and it's in PR, and I was digging in and getting all this information, and I'm going to try to bring it to you guys in English as best as I can, so please bear with me in this matter. Now, we all know, you know, Felix Valdejo, married man, ex-fighter. Last fight he fought, got knocked out, and, you know, he has a daughter, I think about the age of one right now, about one years old or, or so forth, I'm not quite sure. But with all that being said, he's a married man and, you know, he had a mistress by the name of Keishla Rodriguez Ortiz. Now, it was reported that she was missing for like two days and she was discovered, I believe, on Sunday afternoon. So, you know, the story that, you know, she got pregnant. She brought the, the attention to Felix Valdejo that she was pregnant and so forth. And he was telling her that he didn't, in other words, want the baby or whatnot. So for two days, uh... They was talking back and forth about the matter and, you know, they came up to meet each other on Thursday morning to talk about the matter. So, you know, she brought this up to his attention around Tuesday and, you know, he was supposedly threatening her and so forth that he didn't really want the child or whatnot. And in other words, she had to get rid of the baby. This is what it's being said, supposedly. So Thursday morning comes, you know, and she decides to get together with Felix Valdeo. He wanted to go, you know, meet up with her about the matter. So, you know, Felix is driving a dark Durango and Keishla decided to, to meet him. On, it's around 7.30, 7.37 in the morning on Thursday morning. And to my knowledge, you know, she got to where she was supposed to meet Felix. And when she got inside the car, there was a third person in the back seat of the vehicle of Felix Valdejo. So with that being said, you know, she tells Felix Valdejo that, you know, she does not want to be late for work that morning. So the assailant, the third man that no one knows who he is as of yet, was in the back passenger side of the vehicle of Felix Valdejo. And as it was stated, he had told Keishla to hand over her keys to the third assailant in the back seat that he was going to take over and drive her vehicle to the destination as they was going to talk about the matter. So he brought that up to her attention. She gets in the passenger side and, you know, the guy gets in her vehicle. And to my knowledge, he proceeds to punch her right in the chin, full force, and knocks her unconscious. Then he injects her with a supposed syringe. And they are saying supposedly it was heroin, but then now I'm hearing that it was cocaine. And, you know, she got into some sort of shock, apparently. So then they drive off to the destination. And I'm going to show you some footage here. This is the footage where supposedly they drove. As you can see, they're taking you to the destination and the route that they took from where they met up and then where he took her. And ladies and gentlemen, this was early in the morning, you know, daytime. And I was thinking in my mind when I was hearing about this happening and when it happened, I thought this was at nighttime that he uh, threw her and, you know, did all these things, you know, unfortunately, wrapped her up with this, these bricks. And it was about, you know, right here in the picture, there's two bricks, you know, you can see like the tools that he used, but he had more than two bricks. He had like five or six of them. So apparently he took her to this bridge and it would be like around 8.30. And the accomplice, the third guy that no one seems to know who he is as of yet, hops out the vehicle and proceeds to move back and forth on the bridge and, you know, looking out to see if there was cars, you know, because it was morning and, you know, there's a lot of traffic in the morning. So with that being said, he was just looking back and forth to see and make sure that it slowed down a little bit and then... He would give the go-to for Felix Valdejo to come out of the vehicle and dump her body in the bridge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is early in the morning. <laughs> and, 
in 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 a bridge where there's you know hella traffic and not only where there is there traffic in that morning there's supposed cameras all over the place and you know I, I don't know if you guys heard of project green light but project green light is you know supposedly the cameras are hd you know that's just something that they've been working on for the past six or seven years you know the government and so forth they don't tell nobody these things though and these cameras are hd ladies and gentlemen and they can go they can see your pupils if they wanted to so with that being said, yeah, they they use this technology and saint the matter. Now, of course, they have the the footage and all that, but of course, it's not being released yet. I don't think they're going to release it. I'm not sure. Maybe in the future and maybe, of course, when he gets in the courts and faces the judge, then they might proceed to show it to the public. But with all that being said, let's move on. So it's around 830 and, you know, supposedly he's in the vehicle doing what he has to do, wrap her up and, you know, injects her with the drug and takes her out of the vehicle and proceeds to throw her over the bridge. Now, when he threw her over the bridge, it was supposedly was stated that he shot her from the bridge while she was inside the water because it seemed like her body was flowing. So he shot her from the bridge and then decided, ladies and gentlemen, crazy stuff. He decides to jump over the bridge and go to the water and resume to try to tie her up with the bricks to make sure that she doesn't flow and stay above water. And to my knowledge, he kind of succeeded for a little bit. And, you know, he decides to swim to the other side. And I'm not sure. I think the accomplice walked to the other side. I didn't get that from what I've heard in, in the video that I was getting all this information from. But moving on, he decides, you know, Throw himself in the water and then, you know, does what he has to do and comes back up. Crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy stuff. And, you know, after that, the next day or so, everybody, her family is crying for help to see where is Kishla. And she's disappeared for two days. And to people's knowledge, you know, they, ladies and gentlemen, let me say this. They used technology. To gather the situation and the matter and to know that Felix Valdejo had something to do with it. Now, you have to understand, folks, right, that your phone, you know, has a tracking device and GPS or whatnot. And, you know, they, you know, it, it records you while you don't even realize it. It's always hearing you. But that's another story for another matter and another time. But this is what I'm saying. That all played a major part. Trust and believe that. Now, unfortunately, you know, Felix Valdejo, you know, is the suspect of her disappearance. And then they find her body floating in this river. It's a shame, ladies and gentlemen. Keishla Rodriguez Ortiz. And I just want to give condolences to her family about the matter. You know, I'm a man of integrity. Let me say this. I believe, you know, in being honest in every way, shape or form. And I also am a man that believes in having proof before the pudding, in other words. So, you know, now they have some type of proof. They have the cameras there. They, they, I know they locked them up, you know, supposedly he turned himself in, you know, and, um, and they brought him up to the States and the FBI. Now, the reason why he was, the, he, you know, the FBI took over is because of the carjacking. In Puerto Rico, carjacking is a big federal offense. So the FBI took over the case, and of course he's in the States, and they're going to charge him with the murder of Kishla. And, you know, after the sentencing, if he does get convicted, you know, the higher Supreme Court is going to take over and see if they can give him for capital murder, which is the death penalty. And reason being, of course, is because, like I said, it was premeditated. He had time to think about what he was going to do. And not only did he have enough time, he went forth and did what he did. Now, the lady was pregnant with a child. So that makes it not inconclusive. Man, horrible and horrific crime. And it's unfortunate that Felix took it that far. Now, I want you to check out this video from February 2021, just this year. He had an interview. Just check this out. Explícame esa etapa. 
cuando Félix Verdejo se entera que ya Félix Verdejo no pelea por proteger su cara o su orgullo, sino claro. que él pelea por, por su hija? Pues es totalmente distinto. Veo las cosas de otro punto de vista. Eh, antes quizás pues este no estuviese el hambre que, que, que tengo ahora por, por querer ser el mejor, por querer ser el eh, por querer darle el, el mejor futuro a mi hija, a mi, mi familia. Quizás fuese por, por, por el vacilón y por ay, el cheche de la película. Pero gracias a Dios que ella vino a mi vida y pues ha cambiado todo drásticamente y pues soy una persona diferente y todo lo que voy a hacer pues lo hago con, con ella presente porque yo sé que cualquier error que cometa en mi vida pues ella quizás lo pague. Y es triste el caso que yo, a estas alturas de tanta, de tan duro que me ha dado la vida, y pues yo volver a cometer otros errores que tenga que lamentarme y que ella lo sufra. O sea, que te dolería fallarle a ella. Claro que sí. You know, everybody thought that, you know, let me just say this, man. Felix looked like a young, a good young man, you know, good head on his shoulder and all that, as you saw in this video. But he was going through some things. And unfortunately, it shows. Now, let me say, let me bring up a letter that his mother, Madeline Sanchez, mother of Felix Valdejo, had wrote recently and put it out in public. And I'm going to try to say it, you know, and read it. I wrote it in English so I can translate it. And you can see here that it's in Spanish. But let me translate what it said here. And she actually has a title for the letter, and it's called The Agony That Lives in a Mother of an Assassin. And here's what she wrote. I could change my name, move, but with all that, I have to live with the fact that my son murdered a person. I wish I knew what it was that he suffered. I wish I could detain him. I wish I had the opportunity to overchange and live in the shoe of her that lost her life. But with all the desire I could have, I know I can't turn back and nothing will ever be the same. How can one live with the thought constantly in memory, with fault of a crime one hasn't committed, with the rebuke of others because being the parent of the assassin? How was it that I didn't even realize before what my son was suffering? At some point, I myself blame and take responsibility for what took place. It is a difficult thing to live with the thought of someone you loved, raised, and dedicated your entire life to know he brutally murdered another life in a cruel manner. I ask you to forgive me to those who I have offended in expressing my pain. I ask to forgive me to the family who today has to suffer this irreversible loss. But don't ask me to not feel for my son. That is impossible. I don't hate my son nor judge him because he's my son. He killed and destroyed others as he killed and destroyed me also. In reality, I can't escape from this. It's something that I will have to learn to live with until my dying day. So please, don't look at me in that light. I just ask for you to pray for me. Madeline Sanchez, mother of Felix Valdejo. It's a sad, that's sad, man. It is very sad. You know, she's going through it as well, man. You know, a mother of an assassin. Now she has to deal with this for the rest of her life. You know, he put people through pain. You know, one mistake can cause a lot of pain for other family members. In another note, you know, a lot of people are stating and saying that, you know, Felix Valdejo's wife, which her name is Elise Marie Santiago Sierra, Elise Maria Santiago Sierra, right? Supposedly is an accomplice, but there's no proof, ladies and gentlemen. And I am a man that you need proof. So that's how I roll, you know. And there's no proof yet, you know. And not only that, she went to the authorities without any lawyers whatsoever. And here you can see the footage here. that That's her going down the steps and you see her with the authorities. You know, she, you know, they say that she was involved, but I disagree, you know. Now, the mother of Kishla, the victim, 
Kayla Ortiz mentioned her as a nice woman and this and that and so forth. But when, you know, they found her, you know, daughter dead and, you know, they went to the forefront to see Felix Valdejo being locked up. She started yelling and screaming that there are assassins, her and Felix Valdejo. Now, maybe, you know, she was in the, you know, just in the in the heat of the moment and she just wanted to just express her anger and she came at his wife. But it doesn't necessarily mean that she was involved. You know, the wife went to the authorities, like I said, without lawyers, by herself. And, you know, she owned the nail salon and she shut it down. And, you know, that, you know, it's a big burden to, to know that something is going on and with your husband and he's being investigated for someone's murder. So, yeah, of course, she's going to close down her shop and, you know, she hasn't spoken to the public or not or whatnot. But, you know, she went to the authorities and people are accusing her and whatnot. And really, there is no proof. You can't just accuse somebody without no proof. But with Felix Valdejo's concern, there is proof. He is the monster that that committed such a heinous act. And ladies and gentlemen, he has to pay for what he did. Unfortunately, right? I wish no man the death penalty or to be behind bars for life. But if you did the crime, yes, you're going to have to do the time. And it's unfortunate that this matter took place, man. You know, it could have been avoided. He could have avoided this whole thing. But why go so far? Was he hiding her from her wife? Because supposedly they knew about each other. So what was it that, you know, enabled them to go so far? Was it child support that he probably knew he had to pay off for 18 years? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Not for nothing. That's it. That's the first thing I was thinking. But is it worth to take a life? Honestly, it's a shame. You know, this is the thing that's going on in the world. People can't they don't want to be responsible for their own actions. And it's a shame. This is the world we live in, unfortunately. No responsibility whatsoever for your actions, man. If you are a man, take responsibility for your actions. I'm one of those. You know, I've made mistakes in my life, not for nothing. And I went through a lot. And I had a situation back in the day with my, with my baby mom, with my, you know. But by the grace of God, you know, everything is okay. Do, is it perfect? Not at all. But you know what? I am content. And by the grace of God, I'm content. Trust me. My life could be better. Yes, Absolutely. But I'm, I'm leaning on faith and leaning on God for, you know, what he's doing in my life, not for nothing. I'm a man of faith at the end of the day. And I went through a lot of things in my life. And I'm going to tell you this, man. God is good. You know, not to get preachy in this matter, but this is what it is, man. I went through a lot, you know, got shot up before. You know, my baby mom, you know, disappeared one time for three months with my kids. You know, not to bring my matter to this matter. But I was going through a trauma at that time. I couldn't find my kids to save my life. And it traumatized me. I'm not going to lie. It really destroyed me. And I'm actually, I'm going to tell you this. I'm still recuperating from that. And that was about, <laughs> man, that was a while ago. Trust me, it was a while ago. And I went through a lot. But by God's grace, man, I'm here. You know, I had to lean on God. Was it easy? Absolutely not. But with that being said, man, you have to... You know, take responsibility for your actions. And I'm one of those guys, you know. And if you did wrong to someone, go back and correct it. You know, it's better to have mercy than to, to have anger and bitterness in your heart because I was one of those. I'll tell you that much. And I've I'm learned, I've learned, I'm learning and I've learned, you know, to lean on the one who gave me the strength before. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what I, you know, advise men to seek. There's a power beyond, you know. And unfortunately, Felix Valdejo doesn't know that power. And, you know, like some people say, man, the devil is, 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 is vicious. So Felix Valdejo, look, he destroyed lives. He took away a beautiful woman that was so happy to be pregnant with his child. It's such a shame that he couldn't be responsible and be a man. At the end of the day. And look what happened. He had to suffer the consequences. Now his mom is suffering. Now she has to deal with this for the rest of her life. His mother has to deal with that. The victim. Her mother. The one that's really going to have to live with this forever. 
Sad. But you know what? Justice is going to be served. They got the guy. They're going to take him to the States. And they're going to judge him accordingly. And, you know, there's people saying in PR that they're going to wish, well, that he's going to wish that he wasn't even born, ladies and gentlemen. So what is that saying? Oh, man, it's ugly for Felix Valdejo right now. Very. So, yeah, this is the update. You know, he got caught. You know, he, he's the one that did everything. And there was just the third man looking out. He's the one that punched her. You know, knocked her unconscious, put the drug in her, wrapped her up, put the, oh man, threw her over. He did everything. I couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. More to this story soon enough. You already know I am your host, Nice. Like, comment, subscribe. Till then, once again, my condolences to Kishla Rodriguez Ortiz's family, her mother, Kayla Ortiz. May God be with you, give you strength to move on in life. You already know I am your host, Nice. Once again. Peace and love.